Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at a TAL 1 4 inch, 110 millimeter from Russia. Uh, and Russian scopes, I have a great fondness for Russian scopes because of their uh, robust construction. This one is no exception. A wonderful little telescope. And in typical Russian fashion, it's uh, very robust, very strong, very practical, and meets the specifications without going over the top. The TAL-1 telescope is a 110 millimeter f7.3. Um, so, as a an f7.3 at 110 millimeters, it just barely meets the Rayleigh criterion if you use a spherical mirror. And that's what they did. Uh, the Russian philosophy apparently uh, goes to being very practical and do just what's adequate. Uh, the perfect is the enemy of the good enough. I think that's a rough translation of a Russian, Russian saying. Anyway, uh, they've done that with this scope. It's good enough, it's adequate, it performs uh, well, it's not over-specified. On the other hand, the mount is, and uh, all the, the construction here is superb. As a matter of fact, the mirror is also, even though it's spherical, it's very smooth, so it's got a very, very nice figure, uh, and it, it performs quite well, very, very nicely. Uh, the mount has some nice features. It's got slow motion, right ascension, and declination. I'll show you close-ups of all that. Uh, it's got the locks right here, so you can move it around. So, really nice little telescope. It's got a nice set of eyepieces, Barlow, the whole bit, and some other fun, interesting features I'll show you. Let me show you how the uh, slow motions work on this. Those are the locks for right ascension and declination. The slow motions are spring driven. Let's lock it down here a little bit and you can see. I think you'll be able to sleep, see that it's got some pretty nice smooth, it's beautifully smooth, uh, tangent motions. And this is your right ascension. You can probably see it moving. I'm going to move it a lot faster. The nice part about the big knobs is that that gives you really good control so you could move it very nicely and you could actually track a uh, wide field astrophotograph with that on a piggyback. Uh, here is the latitude adjustment device. Let me see, loosen this big beefy robust steel knob here. Now this thing is, it's got a little tangent screw in there you can adjust this very nicely to whatever latitude you need. I think you can see that. You can also, uh, there's a, a big clamping bolt here on the back and you can loosen that up and you can even remove this. That's the way this thing just slips right out of there. Let me show you that. So this slips right out so you can easily take this down and transport it someplace. The whole thing is very convenient in that respect. The finder and the focuser here are also deluxe, very, very nicely made. I would compare them to something like Takahashi quality. That's your focus for the finder. And this has a nice little protective plug that goes on like so. This is all very strong, very robust. That's a thick hunk of uh, aluminum there hold your eyepieces. And also another interesting thing about this is this finder has protective rings to protect the finish of the finder. Not many finders that I've seen. I think Unitron is the only one that I've seen that does that. Uh, and you can lock these down and so forth and not mar the lovely white paint. Here are the accessories that come with the TAL telescope. First of all, it's got a couple of nice plossal eyepieces. Uh, called this is called a super plossal and so is that I don't know what that means exactly but it's a good eyepiece here's a nice little 2x Barlow a little unusual in its configuration here's something that's very unusual this is a, uh, a reticle and the reticle slips right in and screws in to the 25 millimeter so you got now a guiding eyepiece this is for guiding a presumably a, a piggyback photograph so you can use the scope for guiding. This is, of course, the piggyback mount. So you can mount a camera. It's got various uh, 
got an instruction manual, various covers and caps, and, and of course it's got the solar projection device. Okay, let's go through the assembly of this TAL telescope. It's very convenient. These bolts are captured here. This is heavy. This is a very heavy hunk of steel. This is the piggyback camera mount. It's kind of unusual, very unusual. Uh, the camera goes on here a number of different ways. There's several different slots. So there's your camera. Now the camera could be aimed like this. And of course you can redirect it to some extent this way. There's lots of flexibility with this thing. There's three different holes that you can use to attach the camera. So there's how you have your camera attached. Open the shutter and then you just have to very carefully find something to guide on. Use your guiding eyepiece and then track very slowly. Here's a fun attachment I want to show you that goes with this telescope. Very unusual. I've never seen one like this other than this model of telescope. This little device is a solar projection device. Show you how you put it on here. Okay, so now the telescope is set up for solar projection. You would put uh, some sort of an aperture stop here on the front, and I'm afraid I don't have that, but it's not hard to make uh, just a cover for this that allows a maybe a one inch hole uh, to allow a little bit of light in there for the sun. Then you project the image of the sun onto this piece of paper here, and what you can see, I think, is that the piece of paper or the little screen device will follow you wherever you are. It's attached to the counterweight shaft. So once you get this lined up, if you're tracking the sun, it'll track along just fine and you'll be able to see the sun here. It's even got uh, a little uh, simulated drawing I made of the sun. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this wonderful little TAL-1 telescope. Thank you very much for watching.